I'm Chase. And I'm Timothy. And this is Customer Service. Give us a good morning, Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. A little throwback. We haven't yeah. done that one in a little bit. Feels like bit. it's 2023 with that boy. Yep. How are we doing, big dog? Doing fine. How are you? Good. You look mighty cozy today in the North Face uh, fleece, you would say? Yeah. A little purple label. Ooh. Yeah, I, I did the little Discord garage sale and I had yeah. to get rid of that, that one flannel that I bought in Japan. Yeah. I sold it because it was just, it's it nice. didn't fit me. Remember, you wanted it and then you were like, it's a little too small. Yeah. And I put it on, I'm like, it fits. And I'm like, I knew in the moment too, it doesn't fit exactly how I want it to. But, but we wanted purple label. But I wanted it and I liked the piece and yeah. just See, didn't I work. got those pants when we were there and I've been wearing them. I'm still, fig- I just, I'm still figuring it out. I'm not sure how. The pants? They're more of a maybe a summertime pant, I'm thinking. Maybe, but every time I know, I, I feel like you'll, you'll wear them and I don't notice them until halfway. Day. I'm like, oh, those, halfway through the day, I'm like, oh, those, those pants he wears. You dig them? Are they, yeah, yeah, they look good. Oh, okay. I don't even like, they they fit in. What I'm saying is they fit in like in a way where I'm not even like. Oh, I understand what you're saying. You know saying. what I mean? I don't immediately okay. go, always oh, wearing it's, those pants. You know what I mean? I think, I think I always, I put them on and then I put on a pair of shoes and then I'll go out to Michelle and be like, does this look weird? And it's always the shoes, but I will say it's, I got to have Birkenstocks. It's kind of a Birkenstock pant for me. I just get, for some well, reason, the proportion yeah, works, and it that, just yeah, I need. Yeah. In fact, that's why I like mostly like low profile shoes, is because mm-hmm. I feel like that's where I feel most comfortable. Because I say I generally generally wear a straight leg to a wider leg pant, and that's mm-hmm. just just works a little better a lot of the times. Yeah, no, I don't I know why that agree. is. I completely agree. I, think I mean, because it's, it's like wider but flat. Exactly, it's a wider platform, sense. not skinny. Like for instance, I thought I thought when I got those pants, I was like, "Oh great, those black Solomons," because we bought the pants in Japan, and then mm-hmm. right outside of the shop was where mm-hmm. we saw that lady in the in the Solomons, and I was like, "That's gonna go with these pants." Mm-hmm. They don't. I don't know why. It's just a. We talked about this a couple pods ago, like the mental block of not being able to style them. The Solomons don't work with it. The Hoka's don't work with it. Burks do. So anyway, I'm like really trying. Like my main like fashion goal in the new year is to stop worrying about that shit like just wear the shit i like like Mm -hmm. if i like it even if it doesn't exactly do what i think it's if i because you know like i would put those like solomon's on for example and i'm like i like the way they these Mm -hmm. feel Mm -hmm. now i'll admit they're a little slim for my thing but i I put up with a samba those are too slim too but i just deal with it it's not that big of a deal yeah um i don't know what it is like because i liked the way they looked as an object yeah i love them you know i mean but i just got like i would get like get like you said like you get like a mental block on and it's like the way silly something, things, yeah. yeah, it'll be like, it's like, it's falling weird or it's not yeah. right for my, you know what I mean? Whatever it is. Yeah. I'm trying to just be like, if I like it, I don't care. If I just like it as an object, why would I not like it on my body? Cause that probably has something to do with the way I view myself and I'm not going to fix that all in one fell swoop. So <laughs> not before let's, coming into work. So let's just, let's just, just put, put it on. And, on and then if yeah. I, if I like them all as yeah. individual objects and they match, then I'm, I'm, I should be, that should be good enough. Yeah. yeah but I no, shouldn't I be like understand. stalling myself up with. Well, yeah. it kind of goes back to what we talked about with Jonah from Blackbird's Biplane, where it's like, you see somebody in some shit that they tossed on to run to the grocery store real quick. You know what I mean? They were at their house. They realized they need something. They just got to get to the grocery store and back. That's the coolest outfit. Whatever, you know what I mean? When you're like, fuck it, I got these shorts on. Let me just throw this jacket on and I got, let me throw on my sandals and let me just get to the store and back real fast. Yeah. Just, just wear the shit you got and it's going to be cool. But we are in also the worst part of the year to me for clothes because it is absurdly cold number one yeah and that and which people will be like well you can wear a ton of layers that's fine that's great but we are now into the level of cold where it's not wear a bunch of layers it's like wear certain types of layers because it needs to kind of be waterproof because it might be snowing or whatever Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. and it's like slushy and get Mm -hmm. it's ruining any shoes i wear are getting ruined and nothing looks cool you're just kind of it's more it's become utility at a it, certain point. i was just gonna say at this point the you know if you if you don't live in colorado which i'm sure everywhere is probably getting I think quite cold doing you know this but uh it was uh negative four negative seven negative one for like the last three days like um when i drove home last last night or the night prior it said negative 16 in yes. my car and it's like point being it's not about having your cute layers on and shit it's like i need to wear all of the warmest things that i have all at once yeah because even just getting to and from work like it's cold as fuck walking from the cart into the studio so i'm with you it's it's the it's a less than stellar point of the year both it's a little slow around here which we'll talk about here at the pod but uh also just too fucking cold so anyway point being i feel you 
um, it's it's not fun to dress right now. No, it sucks. I feel like no matter what, I don't have enough layers on. I get here. I will say I did a new trick, though. Uh, I brought in my Birkenstock Kyoto's. This that, is not a trick. I've been doing this forever. You just put them in a bag. I saw you do that yeah. the other day. I <laughs> yeah. saw you have some some yeah. other shoes. Backup shoes. Something. Yeah. And I, as I was leaving, I was like, uh, Michelle, can you just – she went and grabbed them for me because I had snow all over my shoes and shit. So she went and grabbed them for me. She's like, wait, what are you doing? I was like, these are going to be my studio shoes now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because inevitably, I just want to wear Birkenstocks always, bro. They just put, it's what feels best. So these are my now. And generally studio speaking, shoes. around here, you can pretty much get away with that. I do mm-hmm. that all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. don't really adjust my shoes because I don't like like shoes that are good for outdoor stuff. To be, I agree with you. you. Like because then you speaking, can't wear them all day. Or if you do, then listen. I, I can't. Feels, I, I don't can't know. Be having just, Gore-Tex, like, bro. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would like it. Obviously, that would be great. But the I mean, well, and Tour Summits coming out. Very shortly, yes. I think I think I am gonna buy yes. a pair of those. Cause I, I actually love that for you, bro. Yeah, because I think that 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 would solve the problem. Yeah, because um, I like the shoe on its own, and it's got all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's, that's that's kind of hard to come by where you get both. Yeah, no, I agree. So I just you I know. agree. Those those would be nice come winter though. I really love that. Uh, I don't remember exactly the color ID, but they're tan. They're taupe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those ones are sick. Those yeah. ones are sick. Which would you do? Would you do the black ones? I don't know. I was thinking maybe, but I really like the tan ones yeah. too. These are going to sell out fast, so I'm sure we'll give. You know, if you're if you are in the Discord or in whatever, like you should make sure you're in there, and we'll make sure you guys get mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. a little extra, like a little extra mm-hmm. day or something to, to, uh, to pre order those. At the time of this pod releasing, when does when do those shoes release in relation all, to those? I'm all screwed up. Is, is it, it next, next week? Friday? I think it's next Friday. I think it's next Friday. So keep an eye out. They're really yeah. cool. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll go. They're going to go fast. Yeah. So and we got some. Just so you know, too, we got Asics dropping that are like a bunch of the ones that are going to mm-hmm. be in and out the door. So yep. if you've been out on the lookout for those, let us know. There's actually a pair of those I kind of want too. Maybe I need to go shoe shopping. Yeah, bro. Well, you know, you'll wear those all summer. Mm-hmm. You, you're you're in and hey, they got gray. You know what I mean? We got gray shoes. Yeah. Well, there's that's so. that's the deal. There's like a gray, and I they got a little of that shiny shit going on. I think yeah. I can. I can't. I can work that into what I'm. See, because what's cool moving. is the way that you'll do is you'll come summer you'll wear a baggy pair of khakis and Oxford uh, and then in and Oxford and then shiny and then, shoes. Yeah, and then yeah, it's just some sneakers. So yeah, I, I dig that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> wait, shit! I was just feeding off of that. I don't know, man. Shiny shoes? No, it was right before that. Oh, I don't know what we. You know, I don't know what we talk about as soon as the words come out. Yeah. Well, anyway, any, what did you get into this weekend? Oh, brother. I parked my car Friday night, and it didn't move until Monday morning. What do we you did to- not do a thing, mm-hmm. bro. It was cold. It was cold, though. Sure. I know? mean, yeah, it's just not. I, uh, oh, I remember what I was going to say. It, it directly relates to the shoes. Spe- you know, I can't be doing Gore-Tex. I'm not, you know what I mean? That That's not for me. Mm-hmm. There's a fine line of keeping my feet warm without ruining the shoes because then they'll smell mm-hmm. bad, you know. But I will say, oh, oh, oh I see why you're saying yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. Actually, yeah. one one time things need to breathe. Two summers ago, I wore my Blundstones. You know what I mean? In the summer, bro, you, you really bro. took a risk that day. Insane. Yeah, but I will say, um, I, God, one Blundstones thing I this, in the summer is gross. <laughs> Yeah, unless you get those lows, I think those lows are tight. I mean, that might but even be fine, then, but like, it's just that is sleeve. a it's a leather sleeve. For anything, your feet. yeah, 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 yeah. That's you like know? wearing like you know you wear like the closed Crocs in the summer and you are swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I found those in my closet this morning, so maybe I'll break those out. Bring those back out. A little small for me, but um, anyway, what I was going to say though, this weekend we didn't do anything. However, what I did do, I've really been enjoying. Um, Shoveling the driveway and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, so you know what I've been doing is I've been putting on my bean boots. Because I have the not Dad the unlined maxing. ones, but I have the ones that are like not full Gore-Tex lined with the flannel. Mm-hmm. The in-betweens. You know what I mean? I actually don't know. I have a pair of those somewhere. I don't know where they went. Brother, you know what? That changes the game. You step outside in those. I don't care how cold it is. You got a nice pair of socks on in those. You could shovel all day. Your And your feet would be good. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> hey, something to think about. Pal. Yeah. So... You like I'm saying you're like dad maxing. It's like you're like you're like it's just like it's like it's like a kink for you to do like Timothy, Midwest dad stuff. There's I, I swear to God, bro. There's nothing that fills me with more elation than getting to use a specified tool 
in the way that it's intended. To be honest with you, bro, I don't know why you're not just trying to have a kid at this point because <laughs> you can't go anywhere. You have a permanent excuse to not do anything. Yeah. You you do you do extra dad stuff that you didn't even realize that yeah. you have to do. Yeah. You are officially a dad. Yeah. Like it, it, it really checks all the boxes for your your interests yeah. and what you would want out of it. You would yeah. find it. I mean, other than the not sleeping, which is not every kid, that was mainly that was. I mean, not. I think it's most kids, but mine was really bad. But I think other than yeah. that, other than the no sleeping thing, yeah, you know, hey, I mean, listen, I need probably, to buy a toolbox this you'd summer. Probably have but... to hide the bongs. But <laughs> other than that, <laughs> other than that, you should be good. Oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, I I get where your head's at. I, you know, I don't. I, you know, you knew when you brought this up. I, I'm I know, not yeah, with you on this I'm, one. I know. I don't I'm care about to. this. Yeah. I don't. I hate any activity. Like I usually, I don't mind like little chores and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But when it's like mm-hmm. this outside, everything feels miserable. Taking mm-hmm. the dog out, every mm-hmm. last stupid running to the mailbox. I hate it. It's just such a ordeal. I got to put so much stuff on. Yeah. You a know. whole to do, bro. A whole to do. Um. But you like to be handy. That's the thing, though. You like to. It's just a skill set I have if I need it, yeah. but I don't. I yeah. mean, I don't even yeah. like, to be honest with you, I don't love when it's like, ugh, got a bunch of little things to fix around the house. Because mm. like, okay, I have to go down to the storage area and get the toolbox out. I'm going to drag oh. that upstairs. Yeah, see you guys. I'm going to forget yeah. something back down there. I'm going to have to walk back down there and grab that. And then it's like, and then I'm like. It's cold. You're inevitably you don't your have, knuckles all up in there. You know, and it's shit. like an apartment. It's like to a certain point, it's like, I don't want to do too much because it's not, I don't want to get in trouble for like mm-hmm, working mm-hmm. on like you know yeah doing something stupid like we do around here when we <laughs> fix things so it's you know it's just like i don't know yeah. I'm, I'm just not into it yeah no i feel you i like like i said I, you know i like to like fix things but i don't know it's yeah. just different at home you know, know what, what brother though you. we are going to build a greenhouse this spring it's going to be a fun time yeah i mean when it's when it's time to go i'll help you out I'm yeah. not putting any plants in that thing so i don't care about that yeah. but <laughs> i'll help you put it together yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i'm sure it'll be a little wonky yeah, but it'll be we'll fine it goes. yeah, yeah we'll i think here's the thing I, have we talked about the things we've built around here before if we t- i feel like we have to we talk have about to we definitely but let's give a quick rundown uh <laughs> top of the list is mega rod yeah it's the, let me explain mega rod. we definitely we definitely have done this but just do a quick a quick one it's a it's a, it is what it is it's a we needed a place to put hangers we put it up between two like ceiling areas we basically like Screwed like pushed. a shower rod, essentially. It's like we ex- we we put the extendo on a shower rod. Yeah, and then we like, you know, like screwed put it, it into up the with, wall with little hooks. And then we have these little hooks that we were kind of uh, supplementing the weight. Everyone with. Everyone told us it couldn't oh, be done. Yeah, people come back. They're like, huh? Well, we'll see. Rolling their eyes at us, like, oh. And then yeah, it's I'm like, telling you, it's gonna work. You go, that's four or five years ago. Typically. And then if you've ever seen like an international shipping pouch, like a clear shipping pouch so that they can see all the custom stuff, we, we just took one of those and wrote Mega Rod on it. <laughs> yeah, so, it up, yeah. That's about, <laughs> if you can kind of imagine that, that's sort of the stuff we build. Yeah, we, yeah. We're, we're good at making it work. Speaking of which, uh, we, we re- just redid the photo room. We've got a new photo situation set up. Do you want to talk about that? I think it could be fun. <laughs> guess it's like i'm the, stoked on it personally it's just a new way of taking like product photos yeah. that, we, that we're hoping is i mean to be honest with you we haven't tested it so i'm not sure it works yeah. yet maybe but, we'll look at it today yeah hopefully. so we gotta we gotta set it up and see if it works but we're excited about trying to like give a new way to have like more of a three-dimensional look to to, fo- to product photos so we can give people a better like full scope of how things fit and look yeah and totally everything. yeah totally so i think it's hard to it's that. like you want to shoot on body but the problem is like you know either you get someone who's like you know, a, a a really good fit and everything, but mm-hmm. then it's pretty unrealistic to mm-hmm. people's normal builds. Mm-hmm. Or you get more of an average guy, and then some stuff is like not quite fitting right, and I don't mm-hmm. want to like pin things and do all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And you can't be like, all right, well, we're only going to have a certain guy shoot on this stuff, and like it just doesn't work right. You know, so I, yeah. I want there to be more. It's going to be more of a way. universal, yeah, yeah a universal to, to, to consistent put, way. Yeah, to be able to you know, so you can put yourself in the shoes yeah. of yeah. So, so we that's got what we're we got that with. cool mannequin situation. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna be dope. So we tore apart the photo studio. I took home that pegboard which i'm absolutely gassed over the moon about cannot wait for it to warm up so i can organize all the tools on that in the in the, in the garage oh i was gonna say why do you need to wait till <laughs> we were gonna use it for our it. sewing setup but it's actually so huge I was gonna say, uh, so it's, it's gonna it's go not, in the it's garage. not like a regular peg no it's, it's not massive. like a little one it's like a, it's big a honker yeah and when all the like hooks on it are honkers yeah it looks too. like you got it from world market you know what i'm saying it looks like it's minecraft <laughs> yeah, it you know what i mean it's, it's like it looks yeah. it's all like big and blocked and yeah yeah strange yeah um what else is that? You said you did nothing on the weekend. I did nothing either. Oh, I went and saw a movie. I went and saw Iron Claw. Finally, I was talking oh, about this yeah, yesterday. Oh yeah, you told me about this yesterday. So goddamn good. 
You you think that it's your favorite movie of the year? Yeah, of, of, I'm not I'm not ready year. to like full on commit to it. I need to see it again. Yeah, but it's one of those movies that really has its hooks in me. Like I just keep thinking about it, and mm-hmm. I, I need to see it again. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. It's kind of like the first time I saw Past Lives. I wasn't even. I, I liked it, but I wasn't sure my full feelings on it. If I really like a movie, that's how I feel. You know what I mean? Because I'll be like, I need to go back to it a couple times. Yeah, and then it'll really fully click. This one is just like. There's also a lot more going on in this. Like past lives is all like nuance and subtleties and, you know, seeing, you know, it's, it's a different kind of thing. This is like, you know, there's this major storyline, but it's also aesthetically so beautiful. And there's all these like kind of subtext to everything going on. And, for uh, for the, the new movie. Yeah, for Iron yeah. Claw. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was, uh, you know, I've been a big Zac Efron guy for a while. Yeah, I, we I always thought that. he was underrated. He's one of those, he's one of those dudes where another guy that would compare to this would be like Robert Pattinson. He made it out of Twilight. You know what I mean? And he's done... Have you ever watched the interviews where he talks about how much he hates it? No. He hates, hates Twilight. It? He did... I don't know what the deal is. He got like... um I don't remember. He got like locked into the contract in some way or and something just... and he had to like finish it. But he, he gives these like interviews. Uh, there's like a compilation of them on YouTube where you can... Any chance he gets to like dig at it he's in the middle of the contract too when he's giving these interviews uh-huh. he just hated it huh. you know what i mean so didn't, didn't like the content i don't know yeah i don't know probably just i mean it's just like a thing like imagine you got locked into something you liked when you were in like eighth grade and you're like yeah. you got to do this for like the next eight years you're like by the time you're like okay. in college you're like i hate this so much yeah. i don't want to do anything i was doing in eighth grade yeah so it's just like it's probably that i don't yeah. know it's really funny though no that's fair but but to that point he made it out the other side. He's been a Batman. He's done art roles. You know, he did that He's one a way where he was Batman the, and Christian the pervy Bale's garbage version of Batman. Oh, uh, now Bale Bronze. sucks. I like Christian Bale. One, I think the Christian Bale Batman rules. But I will say the the Robbie P Batman has an unmatched feel. It's darker than shit. The whole movie is basically a dark screen. Listen, I don't know that I want to be two white guys arguing about Batman uh, on on a podcast. <laughs> I, that record, feels bad. I don't care about Batman. I grew I grew up being I was into Batman when I was a kid, and then I was into the movies and into the comics and into the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I have like a nostalgia tied to yeah. it that's yeah. different. Um, do I care that much about these movies? No, I don't really care. And Christopher yeah. Nolan's not. I, I like Christopher Nolan fine, but mm-hmm. I, it's just fine. I, yeah. People's obsession with him it's, tends to be, in my opinion, people that obsess over Chris, Christopher Nolan don't generally have great taste in movies. It's just like that's one that they know that they can lock onto, and it's just yeah. weird enough that you're like, hey, you don't know what it means. And it's like, that doesn't always mean a good thing. That can be bad storytelling, which yeah. I think sometimes he is yeah. very capable I of. I mean, I will say... So, of all superhero movies, the only ones I care about are Batman. But I don't care about superhero movies also. I could never see one again. I don't care. I'll tell you right now, I think the new Batman is better than Dark Knight Rises or whatever. Uh, whatever would that, that be the one with the Bane or the one Heath with Ledger. Heath Ledger? Yeah. I'm not talking about individual performances. I'm yeah. talking about movie as a whole. Yeah. I'm talking about like storytelling, setting a vibe. I think there were some poor performances in the new one too. Uh-huh. Um, I wasn't a big Zoe Kravitz guy for her role. I think she's kind of was bad. Ben Affleck ever a Batman? Or he was gonna he was they... he was in it, he was in like Justice League or whatever. Oh okay, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah, he's he's bad. Yeah. See, that's the thing is there's too yeah. much of that bullshit. Well, there's too much. A hundred percent. But too Brando, much. circling but the, back the, the Batman that I like is like the new one. That is the like Brian Azzarello really version of dark, like yeah. violent kind of yeah, yeah like really. Yeah. Gr- grimy yeah. it's like a, it's more associated with that like early 80s version of him a late 80s version of that yeah. i like so it's pro- that's the problem whenever you discuss this stuff you're just talking generally about the subjective nature of which one do you like i mean mm-hmm. some people like the like goofy ones because they liked that version of mm-hmm. the comics which is fine you mm-hmm. know what i mean this is it's too i mean i definitely subjective. saw some of the early batmans like the one that has ivy in it i can i can remember oh yeah 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 that that director has had to come out and apologize for making <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. tight. Yeah, but I mean, I grew up with those, so yeah, you know, I, yeah. I was into it when I was a kid. But point They're being, for a kid. Zach Efron has made it out the other side. I always thought, to be honest with you, I thought he didn't phone in roles. Now he didn't do much in his roles because they weren't, you know, they weren't giving him much. You know, what I'm saying they were giving him he was hot High guy School roles. Musical. Yeah, and then what else? Baywatch. For real? Yep. Uh, he was in a movie where he was a DJ. That we used to watch before we went out to the to drink, and because we thought it was funny yeah. to get like hyped up to his yeah. him as in a DJ role. 
uh, I don't know. He's been a bunch I just of random. Feel, I just like, feel like the things neighbors, that I think he, of. Yeah, with with uh, Dirty Grandpa. Seth Rogen and shit. Yeah, this yeah. is it. This is he did a lot of in the genre of movie that I also like. Like I like like low stakes, funny Kurosawa. He, but I also the other version of things I like is like Dirty Grandpa. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I only like two types of movies. I like Neighbors for the record too. It, there's something to say for movies that are fun. Not everything has to just be easy, bro. So heavy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's it's just. It is what it is. Hey, before we before we uh, move out of media, I wanted to also talk. Um, <laughs> did you by chance watch the new uh, episode of True Detective? Yeah. No, not yet. No. Okay. No, we're doing. I'm curious. That. We'll talk about that on the next yeah. pod. Watch it over the weekend. We could talk about it on, on the, for the Tuesday. Yeah, I need, pod. I'm I need to get caught up on the curse, and I need to watch that. Maybe maybe I'll get caught up on the curse, but I'll be honest done with now, you, brother. Actually, it's kind of lost. It. It's kind of lost me. I, I'm down to watch it just for the sake of. Completing the it real problem is Paramount was. Plus. That's who needs to honestly. They Paramount need an Plus, earful from if me. If you work for Paramount Plus, or you know somebody, one of your great grandparents started Paramount Plus. If you have some sort of connection, relay that your app is horseshit. One of your great grandparents set up Paramount Plus. <laughs> no, Paramount. <laughs> Paramount movies. Yeah. Paramount Media. Whatever the fuck the company is. As if Their, we get on the phone sucks. with like an eighty-year-old guy who was involved in original the original Paramount. Yeah. Hey, buddy. This uh, the new your the Paramount. App. Bless for, it's like, what the hell for is an smart app? TV sucks. <laughs> yeah. Shit, He's been retired for the past thirty years. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> um, yeah, it sucks. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, just to finish up Iron Claw, it's like it's like a nearly yeah. perfect movie. It's like the beginnings. I told you, it's like in chunks. It's like the beginning yeah. is a Spielberg. Then you start just getting these gut punches of drama, and then there's like a love story, and then there's all this subtext that's really interesting, and and like a really interesting commentary on masculinity. Yeah, and trauma inside of families yeah. and uh it's just it really likes and it's like i said i really like i get this I, I think you'll understand i have this like fascination with like like suburban texas mm-hmm. oh, i don't, I, I I don't know agree. what it I know, is i know what you're saying but that like kind of like east texas thing i don't if, know what it is but there's like a thing if for the, me it's the same reason why i don't want to move i was it. telling you i would I like, like it but no I, I wouldn't want to live there but either. aesthetically i love it it's a it's a remote place where when you see you're like i don't think we're all supposed to be here there's it's not like, shit here it's also kind of like a little bit that kind of especially like the at least what they're showcasing especially like in the 80s and everything it's like this uh it was like stuck in the 50s almost Do you know what i mean it has this like just kind very of, like old energy there's a lot of like land and it's hot and there's just something that yeah, like bro. revs my engine about it um that that i like watching so there's there's also like that happening and there's this whole like they're like brothers and they're like it's they're like bros and they're like yeah fucking ripped I was gonna say and, they're also they're, shredded, and, and they right? kind of showcase this other side of wrestling which i think is i grew up watching wrestling yeah. and stuff so it's it's cool to see like this more like raw human side of things which i like I don't know. I thought it was, I mean, beautifully shot, beautifully edited, pacing's amazing, acting, each performance was was really good. Jeremy Allen White was great. Um, the kid who I can't think of his name from that show, you watched, the tall guy. Um, oh, from Murder at the End of the World, yeah. Yeah. The, you said that he's I'm, tall as shit. He's so big, and he's ripped. You never see a guy that, that's that tall and that yeah. ripped. It's kind of rare. Yeah. And then that guy, I, I'm blanking all these names, which is embarrassing, but the... Uh, the guy, the detective from uh, Mind Hunter, who was, he's just so good. He's like a powerhouse. The and, guy with the flat top? Yeah. And I can't remember, man, I'm just b- butchering this because I can't think of the actors <laughs> and actresses' names. But the lady who plays his wife is, gave an incredible performance. Um, yeah. She's probably when supporting actress for sure, yeah. in my opinion. I thought she just really nailed it. Um, I don't yeah, even. The whole thing is so good. I don't even really know the story at all. You said not to read. I would not gonna, yeah, read yeah. anything about the story because honestly, it's it's like the whole thing is so shock. I mean, you love like weird stories and stuff. Mm-hmm. This is shocking. Like the whole thing, little yeah. by little, yeah. is really Freaky. like crazy. Yeah. Um. And then to find out that when you read about it, you're like, oh my god, they didn't even touch on all of it at all. Yeah. You, you said know? they left whole bits of the story, they, out whole and, characters out of yeah. the out of the real life story, and you're like, oh my god, like how does how do you how do you move on? How do yeah. you process this? And this it's kind of what the movie ultimately is about. And that's the problem. Like you don't really like that impact. You're taking in the first time. You're taking in the storyline, which is one thing, and the aesthetics and all that shit. And that's that's the problem. It's the same thing with like when I watch Past Lives. You take in like trying to read in that case too, trying to read subtitles and trying to process all of that kind of like a, uh, not just text, but like. Uh, dialogue and everything yeah and then also trying to like at the same time 
take on all the aesthetics, which is hard with subtitled movies because it's like hard to like read and keep you know mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, spend some mm-hmm. time in the scene. So it's just a movie, you, especially that's full of subtext. You need to watch it a couple times, but it's also so you can like live in the world. And mm. this one, I still wanted to live in the world a little bit more, but I'm just trying to process just this fucking crazy. Will you go story. see it this weekend? I don't know. I. I Probably not. Actually, no. I know I won't because I'm watching Gio. Oh, I don't think yeah, I, I don't. It's yeah. not an appropriate movie. Yeah. <laughs> She'd probably be into the wrestling yeah, yeah, aspects yeah, yeah, of yeah, things. Yeah. To be yeah. honest with you, um, but yeah, it is. Uh, it it is, and it's just it's it's devastating. Like the story. So it's like also just needing to go back through it and watch it with like knowing what's going to happen, so you're not so. But I was on the edge of my seat, bro, and it was like. And it was like great because I went to like a ten thirty showing, and yeah, it, was, yeah. it was when it was cold as hell, and there was nobody in the theater at all. A.M. No, 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 p.m. P.m. I go bro. late. Yeah. I love it. You go late, and because of the movies I watch, they put me in the way fucking back and yeah. on the small screens, and it's still big, but it's just smaller yeah. than like the Dolby or whatever. Yeah, yeah, And you can just sit back there and chill, and there's nobody in there, and it's awesome. Bro, leaving a movie, we have I'm sure I've talked about this, leaving a movie at, at nighttime, when you go in yeah. and it's daytime and you come out, it's night, there's something it's very like, like juvenile feeling about that. 100%. It's like mainly what we did growing up. Yeah. Um, Like, I went to movies... I went to like two Often. or three movies a weekend. Yeah. I would I'll say. I mean, it was yeah. like how, how we spent all free money that was available. We would pool it and then, or we would go once we had friends that worked there, and we would go and just go to like three movies in a row. Yeah, and pay for one. And we would. I mean, I I I love nothing more. I would still do it if I had endless free time. I would go to I would go to a movie at six and wouldn't come out until you know two a.m. Yeah. Do you looking back? Are there any movies scenarios that stick out in your mind? Because I have one in particular, but I want to hear yours. What? How do you mean? As a kid, like let let me paint the picture real quick. Yeah, sure. I saw the original Shrek (laughs) in Ashtabula, Ohio. We showed up, me, my dad, and my sister. Okay. How old would you have been? Fucking, I don't know, man. Seven, eight, okay, I don't, okay, okay. you know, young, yeah, young, yeah, yeah. young you know what I mean? Um, I don't know whenever the original Shrek came out, but you know, it was out. And we went to this movie theater, which is now no longer, I actually like broke into and explored it after it closed down type mm-hmm. shit. Went in there, walked us to like, like you said, the back furthest thing. There was no AC and we were the only people in the whole movie theater, Shrek brand new. Ashtabula, mm-hmm. Ohio, so think yeah. about that. Yep. And they brought in like an industrial fan that you see on the side of the games for like NFL football games and shit. An industrial wire fan and just put it in front of us. So we literally were looking through the fan to see the Shrek movie, basically. Oh my God. It was just a miserable hot yeah. summer day. I mean, day, there was a lot did. of those types of theaters around. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like the theater experience used to feel so big to me as a kid, and the theaters were so average compared to what they are now. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. were just like yeah. kind of like. Not great. It was like, there was one that we'd go to in Indiana that was like, it was more or less a grind house. It was just like, yeah. it was like people yelling and being a bad and standing 100%. up. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing though, I do also remember that is like a nostalgic feeling that I, that I am kind of bummed out about now is I would say most movies I see, now listen, I go see a lot of like small indies and shit. I don't expect it to be packed and I don't go on opening day or anything like that. But I have not gone in a long time to a movie that was full of people. Priscilla with the uh, and you know what so, funny also I go into the movie theater I'm talking uh, there's nobody in because like I told you it was you yeah. know, negative whatever out and yeah. it was 10 30 yeah. and there was no they were just cleaning Jeez, out there's nobody bro. in there I was talking to the kid and he's like oh cool man Iron Claw and I was like yeah bro I'm excited to see it and he's like yeah cool it's just down there and he's like it's really great dude I was like cool he, this clear, he's clearly like a movie nerd this kid yeah, yeah 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 and I was like I was like excited to see it man I like his other stuff and you know, I loved Marcy Mar. May, I'm gonna fuck that name up. Marcy May Marlene or whatever. Yeah, it was. yeah. I love that one, and I love. Oh, he did another one that was really great too. That I'm forgetting. Anyway, I was talking to him about the director a little bit, and he's like, uh, he he he's like, uh, you seen anything else good lately? And I was like, oh, theater wise, I just saw Priscilla, and he goes, and he rolled his eyes, and, and and I said, oh, you didn't like it? And he goes, no, I liked it. It's just, do you know how many do you know how many times like we were just selling out theaters to like sorority girls, and I was like. Oh, let me tell oh, you, buddy. buddy. I was there. And he's like, that story that you, I told him that story, and he's like, that's every. He goes, nobody knew what that movie was. I don't think. Like, I don't think they knew <laughs> anything about the director or the vibe. And he goes, it was just sold out to sorority girls who hated it. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, and I was like, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was in there. With, yeah. That's the last time I've been to a like a, a movie where there was actually like a lot of people in there. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it's kind of that kind of sucks. I feel like every movie we went to when I was younger, theater was busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. It used to also be like five bucks to go to a movie, and now, like, dude, I'm I was I'm I'm in thirty five well, for a small drink, small popcorn, and the ticket. I mean, oh, that's that's uh, demented for one person. Thirty five for bro. one. Absolutely. That's crazy. Also, not counting not if you have to it, park but... your shit and you park your car in some fucking. Yeah, but garage, also you know? when I go online and I'm like, oh, it's twenty bucks for a rental. That sucks. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna go pay. I'll 35. save money. But I will say, 
I still really strongly believe in the theater experience, to be honest with yeah. you. If there's certain movies I want to see, I, I think you got to do it in a the theater. I mean, when like the music hits and it hits the right way and you see it bigger and it's, mm-hmm. it, there is something about mm-hmm. that. And in, because you don't, have any distractions like the dog isn't barking suddenly or I don't have to I don't pause it to go to the bathroom or somebody's phone doesn't ring or you know you're like like in the movie you're in it so you have like you have an experience and I don't think it's that often anymore that you have experiences like that so much no I agree even if you're like not a big phone I'm like I don't I'm not a big phone guy or anything especially when I'm at home other than like looking at eBay Mm -hmm. so it's like you know I don't feel that distracted by it, but there, there's inevitable. I mean, the lighting is a distraction at home. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you you control the lighting. You have mm-hmm. like a glare, all that kind of shit. So I still believe in the. You get up, you put something movie. in the microwave. You go sit down. You got to go back and get it. You, but it is prevent. You, it's it's insanely expensive. Oh yeah, no, it's it's ridiculously expensive. But I agree with you. I've always loved going to the movies. I and on that subject of movies used to be cheaper, but also keep in mind pre-streaming you used to be like, <gasps> for, at least for me, it'd be like, oh cool, we're gonna be out in Erie, let's go to the movie theater because they have a big movie theater. Let's go see this movie type shit. Well, you know I'm what I mean? also old enough that I we had to look it up in the paper, and you'd just have uh-huh. the movie. You'd have the movie, you know, like posters yeah. in the paper, and you'd get yeah. like, hyped. You Did you I mean? by chance? Because I I was raised by my grandma more or less for the first like five years of my life, mm-hmm. so I identify strongly as like an older woman, <laughs> just in general. Wow. Like that. That's like I lo- I love Welcome old to the women. club. I feel comfortable with them. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, did you ever like? I remember th- these are just we're getting kind of old guy now you know but like i remember looking in the tv guide that my grandma would get mailed oh, yeah. weekly and fucking circling shit and being like oh hell yeah we got the nascar race on let's watch uh i'm not joking i read that religiously yeah like, i i knew when stuff was on yeah when bro. it would be on i would look for movies that i wanted to see and then i would block out time to be like oh, and shit, i'm that's gonna go it. watch that movie yeah, yeah 100%, I, I, I can still i can give you pre and post switch like what was on the channels. Like I could go at least one to 55, no problem pre 2001 and after you're saying what networks and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No issue at all. I know yeah. exactly where they are. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing that gets, like, too. that gets stuck in your head. But like, that was, I, there was also like, I, I am, I really do miss. And it's, it's the only reason I still really love like golden globes and Oscars and all that shit is because it's like a rare instance where there's still some version of live TV. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I mean, mm-hmm. even sports to a certain extent, but like, I mean, you guys just watch, I mean, Abby will just watch football games and they're just like on it brand. You just watch them whenever you want to watch them. Yeah. I mean, I will say that's, it's, it's a beautiful thing because you got, you sure, guys I are mean, logged I, into I, my YouTube I, TV. I, I so get you it, get all dude. of it. I get it. You know? But like, it's like, it's, it's just like, I don't, I like the shared experience of like, oh shit. I mean, like, like I said, when I missed the fucking slap, one of the worst days of my life so far. When I I said I'm gonna oh, go change the laundry, the or yeah, you, yeah. What, I was like I was like I'm just gonna wait. She, she was like no, just go get it. Like it's no big deal. What's gonna happen? And I literally walked in, and when she turned in her face, the way she looked at me, and I was like, what happened? She's like, you're not gonna believe it. And I yeah. was like, you gotta be kidding me. I never miss any of this stuff. Yeah, I live yeah. for this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, still still yeah. broken up about that. Yeah, I don't know what I did in a past life to get to get spanked like that yeah but. and to not be there when abby and michelle were going to the david sedaris oh, and yeah. fucking lady slipped on the banana yeah like two yeah real misses in my life like i just yeah. things yeah. i didn't think could ever happen or yeah. like the whole reason i've watched live things for so long is like something crazy might happen yeah you know what else i missed one time i very rarely missed saturday night live mm-hmm. okay very mm-hmm. rarely missed it and then who what was her name ashley simpson Right? Ashley Simpson? The counterpart to Paris? Je- Jessica? Paris, Paris Hilton? Simpson. Who the hell is Paris? <laughs> Who was Paris Hilton's friend? Well, hold on. That's that's Nicole. That's not <laughs> that has nothing to do with this. Uh, um It had it was Ashley Simpson. She dated Ryan Cabrera. I think I think I've got all these names right. Um She's the one who got taught lip syncing and then ended her career on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And like they stopped the performance because it like she messed up so bad. Yeah. And I didn't I went to a party that night. And missed it. And w- when we heard, like, the next day that that had happened and yeah. I had missed it, I was like, and there was no way to watch it, by the way. You had to, like, you hope had to find for a rerun that, at some yeah, point. Yeah. It was, sometimes they'd play at, like, 3 a.m. That was it. And I was like, you got to be shitting me. How is this How how is this the thing? I'm, I had to watch it on, like, TRL like an idiot. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've, I've, I, this has happened to me a lot, actually, now that I'm listing them out. Yeah. Okay. Well, Wait, inevitably- hold on. I have, I have a funny story that just came to me. This is This is a good one. The, the, I was thinking Simpson. You said Jessica Simpson. I was like, Jessica Simpson. Like, did, Simpson. she married Nick Lachey, right? At one point, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted they to make had, sure they I had got the whole newlywed show. 
Okay. I was working at Red Wing in 2014 down here on Arapahoe. Before living here proper. I was just here for the summer. And I worked with this older You know, when fella. people... We got some negative feedback not that long ago that was like, we're always talking about like people in places as if you as if uh-huh. we're like only talking to a select group of people. And I'm like, I don't know that we do that. I'm like, I know we do it a little bit. And then as I've, we've gone through this conversation, I'm like, no, that's pretty much all we do is talk about yeah. very specific people, very specific places. Well, I'm... I, you're either with us I, or you're I, not. I, I don't the, care. It's I all I know. Fe- I hear the feedback, but... I'm just telling stories from things that happened to me. If and you want to hear us talk broadly about random, like, give what us do you some want topics, my opinion we'll on broad, yeah. that Travis football player? What do you want? I don't care about him. He <laughs> looks, I hate his haircut. Honestly, he's not handsome. He, that, lo- he looks like the best, lo- he looks like guy. the best looking guy in my hometown. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like the he, bar's low. If he showed up and was a plumber, you'd be like, I got a handsome plumber at my house. But yeah, but, <laughs> but wait, who, do, who else did we say that about? What was the other guy? I, I couldn't remember if that was him that we said that. It might have been not. him. It's like it's like he's fine. Yeah. And to be fair, this we're also describing Taylor Swift, which is the yeah. same. Yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah. deal. Yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. Yeah, she's like the best looking girl at a, like a, the biggest high school in a small town. Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah, I guess it's. I mean, the 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 cream of the crop at my school that I went to. I think back now, and I'm like. That's not. <laughs> that can't be it. Oh, that's funny. So, you know. That's funny. Um, Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but but real quick, before, but uh, real quick, I, I hear that criticism, but I'm telling stories and things that happened in my life, and I'm just going to keep doing it because I like to. But worked at Red Wing, worked with this old fella, right? Drove a minivan. It was a part-time job for him. He had a side gig. Oh, where, what else did he do? <laughs> he had a side gig where he would go to bars and would record the live musicians, whoever's playing that night, and then he would upload them to his YouTube channel. Now, think of all the YouTube videos in the world that have like three or four views. Mm-hmm. It's that. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is what he did. And so he'd, leave, he'd have to leave work early because he'd have to hightail it across Boulder to some random fucking bar out in Lafayette or something to record, you know, uh, somebody doing a country set. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he was balls to the wall on this. You know what I'm saying? But he was, he was a freak, too. So, funny enough, he I looks like... anybody who does this type of... He like, just, dude, he just he, was unabashedly just doing his... Yeah. And like he would maybe watch all the videos and, and he thinking, would tell me about all their names and the drama yeah. and... But he looked like, so I can paint the picture, he looked like the guy from Mindhunter. The, yeah. the, 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 the guy we older talking. white fellow with the, with yeah, the, the flat top. Flat top. Yeah. Now imagine that, but glasses that are like, you know, like a, like a smoker would wear. They're tinted, mm-hmm. but he wasn't a smoker, I don't like think. Coke bottle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So anyway, this is all just to set up the story where we're, we're working together one day, and I don't remember how the fuck... He got he got talking about Jessica Simpson, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. And we're sitting at the desk together. And we're, there's a desk no wider than this desk we're sitting here. And Timbo, he looks at me and he looks over his glasses at me. You know how old mm-hmm. people do? He goes, I heard she fucks like a minx. <laughs> <laughs> Just the worst. <laughs> Older guys yeah. of a certain age yeah. will say something like that with, like, as if that's just like floating around. I've you never know what I mean? heard that phrase no. before or after, but it has stuck with me verbatim because I remember being like, "Who the fuck?" Because you feel different after yeah. hearing it. You know what I mean? But he needed to look over his glasses so there was no other material impeding his eye contact yeah. with my eyes. Yeah, just to tell me that he heard the justice. We're doing, hey, like a mix. sir. We're doing boy talk for one second. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she does. I don't know what she, how she's hoved into my oh, realm, but I've heard one thing through the grapevine. <laughs> and uh, here sir, it we're comes. Gonna do, Chase, we're going to do boy talk for a second, if yeah. you don't mind. God. So anyway, ew. I just had I had to tell that story. Yeah, ew. Uh, well, and you know, you really painted the picture with the, the, the guy that looks like he's from the 50s with the flat top. Yep. Being that, that with, being with the big guy. glasses, driving, a, again, a minivan. Just filled to the brim with sound equipment and shit so he can record you do your live set at a dive bar on a Tuesday night. I mean, he also sounds like it would be interesting to follow that guy around. Watch, you know he's what I mean? making fucking millions from YouTube revenue. He he got in on someone's early set. There's no chance Bark Box is paying him <laughs> any money, bro. <laughs> Just so that they can see, you know, like, uh, you know, a guy do a Led Zeppelin cover at the Lone yeah. Star. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of ad revenue... Miami Fruit said no. They dropped. Damn, they didn't want. They it. won't. They won't be a sponsor. <laughs> well, 
So listen, we still support what you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. What a bummer. But um, all right, let's talk let, about. Let's do a little bit of clothing stuff. We've got to be getting pretty close. We are. <laughs> Dude, I, I was even gonna say we should probably we should get into it sooner today. Yeah, let's do it. But we didn't. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we were gonna talk about kind of like what's going on because we're sort of like you know in the market right now. Yeah. You know we're not we're not traveling or anything like that. There's. I don't know. There's we can not, do a lot digitally, man. I don't know. A lot of people feel differently about you know seeing this in person versus not, and there's like a million pros and cons that I'm sure no one is interested in because it's boring and it's more just logistics and business mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. money and you know dumb shit like that. But we've gotten used to it at this point. We're quick. We're agile. We like to be fast. We like to budget, you know, pretty yeah. strictly. Yeah. Um, so it, it's we we're not traveling or anything, but we have started to see the collections and. Some big standouts. Well, number one, did you happen to see the? Uh, I really we haven't written it or looked at it one by one yet, but I did see the uh, Aura Lee collection this morning. Oh no, I didn't. So good. Yeah. So good. It has like the runway's great. It's got them. They're all like carrying like dry cleaning and stuff. And Sick. and uh, it is like the. It's it's a little bit more like maybe. Hmm. Like I'm a little more casual overall. Okay. Than it has been in the past. Like not that it's ever been formal. You know what I mean? But yeah. A much more casual approach to, to to the to the collection and the color the color palette was really great. I don't know. I'm interested to see how people respond to it. Um, it still looks very much like Aura Lee, but there is like a there's a, there's definitely a little change of pace to it. To you be feel you, you feel more not that Aura Lee is unwearable, but you what what how would you how would you surmise it's it? Still very like slouchy and flowy yeah, and cool. you know great fabrics and all mm-hmm. that stuff, but it just is a little bit more. I don't know. It's just a. There's still like suiting, I guess, but even the suiting just looks very casual, cool, and comfortable, and like yeah. you know. And I feel like, to be honest with you, a lot of what I've seen is, is even just so far is that there is this kind of like much more. I think a lot of people thought, including to a certain degree myself, that we were going to go down another lane of like really formal dressing. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I think there was probably a lot of that was in response to you know, everything with like lockdown and COVID and everything, there's mm-hmm, going to be this mm-hmm. big, some, every, you know, there's the return to formal or a return to the office or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, no one dressed that way to go to the office in the first place, yeah. really. So I don't know where you're getting, like, why would there be that big of a knee jerk? But in fashion, there often is like big, like, you know, big responses to yeah. little things going on in the world. So it, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me necessarily. And you did see some people trying to like make that work. Um, this feels more... Maybe this sounds negative, but I don't mean it so. It, everything that I'm seeing feels a little bit less directional. Okay. And I more mean that it just feels like great clothes. You know what I mean? Like a little less like I have a very specific direction I want this to be or, or like a specific vision or something. Mm-hmm. And feels a little bit more like here's a bunch of really great pieces that will work with everything. Sick. And like we saw that yesterday just looking at like – or slow, for example. I know people will be excited about that. Yeah, let's circle back to that. The collection is excellent. I mean, it's. I think even we haven't even like fully finished the buy or like Mm-mm. really looked at. Mm-mm. I mean, we've just browsed it because it we was available. Peeped it. Yeah. Um, it is really smart. It's tighter. You know, it's not a huge yeah, collection. Yeah, tighter, seasonally, but, but no joke. We, we both simultaneously said there's literally not a single thing that we would skip. I everything think every was good. single thing was absolutely stellar. And and this is what I kind of mean. This is that you know, obviously that's a small brand in the grand scope of like fashion in general, but mm-hmm. um not to us, but in in fashion when I'm talking about like Louis Vuitton and every, you know, every other big house yeah. or whatever yeah. the hell. But like it really feels to me that like Instead of focusing on like, here's this direction and storyline and here's all this stuff, which I'm still a big supporter of and everything. And I've seen this with a couple other brands too that I, and I haven't seen everything, just a couple other brands I've been shown so far. It's like, hey, we fixed that fit that everyone wanted us to fix. Are we, are we added this cool detail? Are we changed a shape? Are we like changed this banding at the bottom that made it really hard to wear because it was a lot more directional before? Mm-hmm. And this is just like same piece that everyone liked, but was having troubles with guessing. and we adjusted it. So yeah. it would like just fit better or took something that everyone loves and did it in great materials. Yeah. It, it's a lot of that. It's yeah. not so much, it's almost like a little like, I don't want to say repair work, but like revisiting things that 
maybe we're off by a little bit yes. and just fixing them. I think to be, in my to be opinion, like, oh man, that's exactly whatever. Like people are going to love this. You know what I mean? We, we've seen it firsthand with the discord. We've obviously been massive Orsol supporters for six plus years. Now we made the switch years ago saying, man, that's pretty much the only denim we're going to carry. We love that shit. Um, I think that what people go to for Orslo are the pieces that they're like, all right, cool. I'm comfortable in this. It's not too much of anything. I will wear it. Potentially, I could wear any of these pieces every single day mixed with any of these other pieces. You know what I mean? And I think that that's what what Itro and the team honed in on was like, people just want the shit that they're going to wear a lot. So let's just like take that, make little spins on it. Some of the stuff comes in summer weights. You know, we've got like linens and stuff where we wouldn't necessarily see them on those pieces previously. Just like like you said, the hitters fixed them up and slightly changed them. Newer options. Yeah, I'm having troubles like putting like specific words to what I think is going on. But it even felt that same way with Ors. I mean, uh, or Elise. Sorry, when I was looking at that collection, going, I can't really put together an exact theme. But there is like there's a there's a comfort to looking at all of this mm. that it all feels so wearable, and every piece felt like it could be like one of your favorites. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's what like and everything. I don't know if it's like there's a tinge of nostalgia happening. I know there's still a little bit of that remnants of like 90s nostalgia. And maybe we're kind of like, you know, as you go through like the cyclical version of fashion, we might be on the far end of that where it's like, oh, it's a little less like it's a little harder to put your finger on exactly what, what it is. Yeah. It's not so like obvious or costumey or anything mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. It just and I think even just like going through everything that we've gone through with like maximalism and, you know, big oversized stuff. I've noticed stuff isn't like as there's not as much drama in everything so far mm. from what I've seen for fall, winter, 24. Yeah. Is it's like, we've gone like, oh, there was these great pieces that maybe were like really big and dramatic before. And now we're still using the same materials, but it's in a slightly more approachable, you know, mm-hmm. uh, You would still form. say everything's still feeling pretty full though, huh? We haven't Definitely, rubber banded back yeah. to skinny, No, 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 no. I think everything is going to stay a little bit more in this lane. I've been wondering that, you know, I mean, like. I, look, they'll. they'll that's that's the thing that everyone wants that to happen in fashion. It's like they they low key like you've got the the more in crowd that's going to be like oh you know if everything's full then let's go skinny and that you know it's just like it's just a you know it's a knee jerk yeah. reaction to every single trend that happens. I think it's gonna. I I'm not saying it won't happen because it will. It, it inevitably everything comes back that you know. It just it depends on how long it takes. Mm-hmm. But uh, so we'll see a return to it at some point. I'm sure, but it's it's not going to be. It's not going to be that fast. You know what I mean? And it's it's certainly nothing that I'm seeing. And, you know, obviously, it's a little hard when we talk about things because, like, for the most part, we're looking through a more Japanese lens, I would say, because True. a lot of the brands that we just, carry yeah, are Japanese. Just, just that, yeah. um, so we're not seeing the full scope of trends. And I'm not and I'm not one to sit here and say I'm any sort of, like, trend predictor or forecaster or anything like that. I think I've done it long enough that I can see big picture or mm-hmm. understand when something is just a quick hit versus yeah. a long-standing thing. Because you've you've heard me talk about when we've looked at things before. I'm like, I don't think it's something we need to buy into just yet. Um, and it'll be because I think that being too early is just as bad as being too late. Yeah. Um, Which we've and done. And sometimes we've it's also done. just like okay to be like, this just isn't for us. You know what I mean? Like I'm not responding to it. And if I'm not responding to it and the team's not responding to a trend, we're not going to sell it well because it's not us. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just okay to like I, – I don't really think – I mean, at least not in my specific business. I don't think trend forecasting is that important. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't think that's really what we're focused on. Is like I hitting agree. quick trends. I agree. Not to say that it never happens because it certainly does. And there's you see we try to of accommodate. The trend, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But we we probably have a slightly more mature version of it than. And I don't mean that as like a compliment. I mean it, the, we're we're more on the in the middle of that bell curve rather than at the beginning. Yeah. In, in a lot of cases, um, like it's diffused. And I just think that. What happens is someone will create a knee-jerk trend. Like, let's say somebody started putting out skinny pants. And, every, and you know, it gets press. And maybe some celebrities start wearing it. You can go, okay, I see that this is kind of catching on a little bit. Maybe this will be a thing. I don't feel the need to jump on that right away. And I don't think our customers likely feel the need to jump on that right away. I, yeah. I, I think that, that that can often feel a little showy. And much like, I just li- I like diffusion to a certain degree. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about, like, when things get simpler or dumber or dumbed down or anything like that but i just think that it's better once it's been translated a few times yeah sure the first translation always feels harsh 
Mm-hmm. And I don't really like harsh stuff. So I, I, I like it to be a little softer. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's where we kind of come in and you see like, you know, you see the trends passing through. And I think that that's where we're at. We're probably on the other side of a bell curve to where something else is going to happen soon. There'll be some bigger and more dramatic yeah. thing. There's not a lot of drama happening inside of fashion right now, in my opinion. You don't have any major celebrity designers making big waves. People argue Pharrell, but the collection, while it's not, bad it's not really good either in my opinion it's just it's just sort of okay mm-hmm. um it was also an, that was going to be a difficult baton to to get past to be honest with you mm-hmm. but no matter how you felt about any of the designers but it's it's like there's just not a lot of drama happening and yeah. i actually think sometimes this is the best version of fashion because it's the most it's very wearable it's it, it, the 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 trends that are being like recycled are mature and smart and they've been adjusted for like the user yeah and i think that that's when things get sometimes the most interesting you know what i mean i think that that's you know when you see like really like mature designers a lot of times that's what makes them good is the subtlety in which they're using a trend yeah and i think that that's kind of where we're at right now and not i i like it i mean it's proving so far in the in the seasons of things i've seen it's been smart you know what I mean? Like just really like considered and smart yeah. and not not going too crazy with any one thing. It's no I'm not seeing tons of crazy fabrication. I'm not seeing tons of crazy proportions. I'm not it's mm-hmm. more just like, oh, this is just really solid, wearable, yeah. awesome yeah. stuff. And I think that's just as exciting as being like, look at all this crazy nutso things. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. I'm I don't know. I think that there's there is definitely especially the way fashion has amalgamated a little bit through social media and everything like that. I think it's pretty confused right now because it doesn't know what to do now. Now that like social media is the way that most fashion is prevent presented, um, whether you like it or not, that's how people are seeing it all over the world. It's being digested by more people than ever. The celebrity designer thing I think is starting to die a little bit. Yeah. I just don't think that that's, it's not making as many waves as you'd want to. Collaborations are not making are not getting the press or at least getting the freak out reactions. Like the Bodhi and Nike comes out and you're just like, hmm, I don't know that we it's cool. Love it's that okay. shape. I love that shape cool. though, bro. I, I like it. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't like it. Yeah. But could leave but, it. But but no one's getting no one's getting crazy about stuff mm-hmm. anymore. I mean mm-hmm. there there was fever shit. There was very it was feverish mm-hmm. the way people mm-hmm. were consuming like any collab that came out didn't matter. I mean, it, especially during the like, you know, certain areas of like the Nike collabs and stuff. You're like, this isn't really like, it's barely a change. It's not that interesting. This, the collaboration itself isn't really like doing much. It, it just got overdone. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there isn't still really cool stuff happening. There is. But the way it's being consumed is it's a little less crazy. Yeah. And I think that the fa- the response we're seeing in the collections we've seen so far is that. It's like a little bit more like this isn't about going you don't need to get crazy about this. Mm-hmm. Is that we don't need? We're not making a huge production out of something. We're not going. This is super directional. There's a there's a story that you have to drive home. It's more just like, this is what we do really well. We've been doing it for a while. Here's the most mature version, yeah. making smart decisions, smart changes, using smart fabrics, adjusting things that needed to get adjusted, and just be a really mature brand. Like more, spending a little bit more time on the personal brand rather than on individual pieces or individual stories yeah. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. No, I feel that. So I think that that's, I think it's in an interesting place because we like it that way, but I don't know where it's going to go from here. So there'll, there'll be a straw that breaks the camel's back at some point and something will happen and then everyone is going to, you know, yeah, I'm flock curious. to it. I'm curious. I think that right now it's a deeper set of things rather than just a general consensus of not being uninspired, but less dramatic. Um, I don't, I, so I don't know what they're going to do with it from there. I think it's, I think it's going to happen. It's going to have to do with like, I think what, I think I would predict that the way it's going to be consumed is going to change somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I have no concepts or ideas or anything like that. I just think that that is the thing that is making things difficult right now because the, the way people used to react to things happening is just not the same any longer mm-hmm. and they're going to have to change that. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to, I don't think that's going to come with one single thing. You know what I mean? It's going yeah. to need an entire like review of how we're, I mean like you could argue even at the beginning of the, the celebrity designer, which I think actually, look, there's going to be a lot of different arguments here and, and I think they're all valid. I, I knew that there was a big sea change when Kanye presented for the first time. Mm-hmm. Because he presented it differently, the clothes were 
different than well i mean they were obviously he was pulling a lot of inspiration from certain things but for a general audience that was probably consuming it the first fashion for the first mm-hmm, time mm-hmm. because of him they looked at it entirely differently they looked at fashion differently they looked at like he he that, that whole bringing streetwear into it and everything this was a huge sea change and then you saw that happen like you saw streetwear influence everything sneaker culture blew up yeah. you know and all these things kind of changed and switched and reacted to that one thing yeah because it was like a way and, and because it, it drew the public eye for the first time and it took over social media. And like, you know, even when social media first started, it wasn't like it was fashion focused. It yeah, just made yeah. it a little bit easier, but people weren't using that as a tool yet. Then it gets spread everywhere. It becomes they build entire news sites based on fashion you know, yeah. for the first time yeah. and, and, and culture and everything and how it relates. And we got to we don't have to. It doesn't nothing has to change. But I think that's what will change is like the. The consumable of it will will change yeah. somehow. Yeah, I'm curious about it. I'm curious but about it. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have anything like? Do you have any brands you haven't seen that you're excited about? Hmm. Yes, I would like to see what we've got cooking from Sassafras. Mm-hmm. Uh, really positive response when we got that in for the first time. Um. I mean, the biggest one is for me is always Orslo and EG. But uh. What would you, what would you, how are you feeling personally? Like, what would you like thing, how would you like things to change? If I you could change am, anything. I am feeling like I have, I'm really just looking for the, just the things that make me happy this year and just to get more of them. Like, I don't think, this is not a very experimental year for me. I'm just going to really lean into the wearing all my shit and just letting it get. I mean, I th- but I you think that I mean? there's a weird like collective consciousness happening where that's kind of like what the collections have looked like yeah. to me so far of more just being like, I just want that kind of, I want almost like comfort food to a certain degree. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I think yeah. that that's like, that's great on its own. You yeah. Know what I mean, as its own thing. Yeah. I don't have anything crazy that I'm looking to do this year in terms of, for, for my own personal style and shit. You know what I mean? I think I regularly look at my closet and I'm like, mm, I could get rid of about a third of this. I don't wear any of it. I'll just give it to the guys here. At this Well, stew I'll, and- I'll throw something out that you and I have been talking about mm-hmm. f- is like, we think that there's this like post gorp thing happening. Yes. And I don't think it necessarily means like that whole trend I think is I don't think it'll go away necessarily. No. It'll, it'll change. It'll, it'll evolve in some way. And I think that the like dark harshness that I think really was happening kind of at the same time of like the, the popularity was growing at, at during like COVID. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, everything felt like, I mean, just there was a lot of like riots and shit in the news. You start, I mean, in, inspiration comes from anything. I think there was a lot of that kind of like dark, wearing, sinister feeling kind of like, yeah, wearing you know, the balaclava very, and yeah, some shit. Yeah. A brace just to have all your things. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, I yeah. think that that's cool. Cause I mean, I'm, I love when fashion gets inspired by culture. Cause I think that's like the mm-hmm. most interesting thing that can yeah, realistically happen with art. But, um, it was, it was severe, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think at the same time, coupled with people wanting to be outside of their houses, you know what I mean? And like investigating, mm-hmm. taking a walk in or a hike or anything for the first time, really. And then that whole thing kind of blowing up, or even if you weren't doing those things, you were kind of fantasizing about them because of the way things felt. Yeah. Um, I think there was this very like severe, harsh, like reaction to it, like that knee jerk reaction. And now we're dealing with a little bit, like we're talking about before, like diffusion on diffusion on like yeah. amalgamation. And I think that now we're kind of looking at like, what we think is more of that like post gorp situation, which is like this softer side to those kinds of things. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it still has, it's still inspired by that. Everyone's thing. still going outside. We, we still st- got the full silhouettes. They're still the younger generation. They're not drinking as much. They're not doing as many drugs. I don't, I mean, there's still some, they're yeah, different yeah. Than, I, than what I'm familiar with, but yeah. like it's, but what I'm saying is like, it, there's a much more mindful, like a young, a younger generation is a little bit more mindful, a little bit more like, they look outward a little bit more to mm-hmm. their to mm-hmm. their environments. Uh, you know, even just the kids around here. And I know we're in Boulder, so I'm, I understand we're in a bubble to a certain degree. But like, it's like you can tell that that, that stuff's important to them, and I yeah. think that that is important to a bigger, a broader audience than just that. And it's going to get translated that yeah. way. So I think that we're going to see this like return to these like still like outdoorsy types of things, but just softer, more of that like what we what we've been chatting about. Um, and you'll see eventually, but the, yeah. but like this sort of like, 
like the, like the return to running that happened in the like late seventies, early eighties, or like the the outdoor boom of the seventies, really, where it was like mm-hmm. all that stuff still happening. You see it in in a lot of different brands that are definitely inspired by this specifically. But uh, yeah, I think I think there's something there. I think that like it's it's got it's kind of what I've been drawn to lately of like less not 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 inorganic materials, but like. Also, like you know, not but going to like synthetics, but in a softer way, mm-hmm. or like no, you know, or blends and like you know, like yeah. the old sixty forty materials, the old Sierra designs, like that kind of thing. Yep. it feels more prevalent than ever. To yeah, me. no, I agree. I yeah, agree. so so I'm 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 I feel like we're gonna see more of that. I've seen a little bit of it peaks here and mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. and I just I think for... we've got some thoughts around the matter as well. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, even just like, you think about the movies that I've started to see and stuff, it's like, man, I just think that there's this interest in the like late '70s, early '80s, this kind of like softer, like yeah. hazy feeling that I yeah. that I think will permeate into clothes. So that's yeah. that's where my head's at. Crunchy, really. yeah, crunchy. I think, I, I, but like people aren't gonna like that that I'm deducing it to that. But I think as we're talking, I think if I were to say a word that is encapsulating it, it's that. It's like like it or not, well, I feel like shit is feeling crunchy sure and that well because i think gorp had that element to it like yeah. that trend had that element to it but they weren't sure how to digest that exactly yeah so you see more of the whole like you know gothy version of it but there's also this really soft sunny version of things mm-hmm. and i think that i don't know i i i'm hoping maybe i'm hoping more than it's it's what i'd like to see happen yeah where I, I i personally it's what i'm feeling drawn to it's what feels comfortable right now yeah it, it, it feels like personal to me in a way like it's kind of like how i feel you know what i mean trying to be more active trying to be outside mm-hmm. when the weather's yeah, fair, good fair, fair. and uh also try to incorporate some trends but not dramatic ones yeah i feel you so it kind of all makes sense to what we were talking about too so i don't know i mean we'll see that's just what i guess that that's that would be my answer to my own question would be like that's kind of what i'm hoping to mm-hmm. to see happen a little bit yeah but, but who knows no i'm into it i'm into it. I, I think people are just still going outside and shit but it's less like maybe they're just going outside just to like go outside and not to be part of a thing well, you know I mean, what look, i mean the whole health and wellness thing that took off that's all great that's all good and well the same yeah. shit happened in yeah. the 80s and 90s i get it and then there was i think that that was that was a big i mean look at all the sporting rich shit like that's all that 80s and 90s wellness yeah explosion yeah it's very severe it's very like diet and you have to be all in and you have to work out it, it feels in a way kind of passive aggressive if i'm being honest mm-hmm. and i think the the version of that happened in the seventies was more like, oh, you just get outside and you like smoke weed outside yeah, and just chill and, outside and, and just good. sort of like relax and be in it and it, you know, you know, just spend more time like I don't know, being in the moment a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. It sounds corny, but like that's kind of like yeah, it's not so serious. It's not you have to do a certain activity and you have to get in a certain amount of steps and you have to like work out and you have to eat well. It's it's more just like doing things that feel good, like eating well because it feels good yeah. to your body, not worrying about what it does, and being outside because it feels good, getting sun on your skin. That Brando, kind of you're touching on something. I, I think about this a lot. Believe it or not, it might sound weird when I say, it, but when you when you tell stories about your Italian grandpa, you said he smoked, drank. A whatever, but like it was always in modest quantities. He never yeah, overdid say he drank, anything. It was in the tiny little you exactly, know, yeah. and you'd say he have like a you know a fistful size of food, and mm-hmm. and but it was never in excess. And I think actually, as we're getting, uh, you've nailed on a topic. It's like everything used to be with the maximalist. Everything was in excess. It was how many fucking crazy colors, textures, fabrics, silhouettes can how I have on my body sil- so everybody yeah. knows that I'm really him and I'm wearing this shit different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as you're touching on the health and wellness, it was like, oh, I could, I can't do that. My trainer would never allow me. Uh, I'm actually only, uh, I'm, I've been boofing raw kombucha and that's actually, I found out that's the best way to well, to the sev- consume kombucha <laughs> to shove it up your ass. And the you know severity what I mean? of like that kind of stuff too yeah. can be interesting because it feels like a, in my opinion, it can be interesting in a way because it like feels like if I join this, I can make this my brand and this will be, I'll be better because of it. And I'll, mm-hmm, and I'll join a thing mm-hmm. and I can make a big change in my life yeah. and that'll feel good. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not sure that's exactly it. You know no, what I mean? I like, I, I, don't, I don't, I think that, like, I and think people have explored all these different, and exactly. that, people need to. You this gotta. is the reality yeah. of all these trends. You have, I think if you're into fashion 
and you're the prime example of this saying, I won't do something, I won't do something, and then you do it. Boom. You know what I mean? Um, it's like you, you want to participate in all these things and figure out what makes sense to you. And as your identity changes, like everyone's does, you want to explore different avenues. Mm-hmm. I've, mm-hmm. I've said, I'm 35. I still have these like things where I'm like, I'm going to be this guy or I'm going to be this guy. Yeah. And, I'm, and, I, and lately what I've been feeling is I don't want to, I just want to be me and I just want to do my things and I want to like the stuff I like and I don't care if it all goes together in a certain way. I don't want to yep. have, I'm, yep. I'm sick of pretending like I'm, I'm not collecting anything anymore. I'm not doing any more collections. I'm not going to start collecting a certain brand going, I'm this guy. It's like, yeah. that, no, the designer is that guy. Everyone else is meant to pick and choose from this and you know what I mean? You participate. You can still collect. I want you yeah. to collect. Certain people, everyone's different is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just start, I'm just kind of feeling, I think that there's a little bit of an exhaustion with fashion and I don't mean that as like a negative. I don't mean like, I don't think fashion's going anywhere. People, I think everybody's going to be happy cons- by clothes. They love in, clothes. Yeah. I don't think when there's going to be a When you're in this world, you're not going to stop. Maybe, no, maybe gonna stop buying to clothes. small degrees, <laughs> you know I mean? but not, no. But I do think that there is like, I think trend chasing is feeling exhausting right now. And that's okay because that's not really what we do. Is yeah. what I'm saying yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's it's more like let's just buy the stuff that we, we you know we've tried a lot of things out. What's mm-hmm. the stuff you like now? Like 100. Let, let's decide what the stuff you actually if you if you want to do if you're like an acronym guy and you want that whole you you want that technical life. I think that's cool for you, dude. Like it, I see yeah. that and I'm Dope. like, God, that's cool. Yeah. But I I what I think is happening is I. I think a lot of people are being okay with the way individualism, you know, if I said that's a weird individualism has happened yeah. in, uh, you know, through social media and everything. People are, it's just getting to the point where it's like, it's, it's fine to be like, I see that. I see you. I this think is it's just cool what as I shit, do. but it's not for me. And yeah. that's cool. So it's cool for you. And I'm, it's not what I'm going to yeah. do. And I yeah. think that that is kind of almost like what we're seeing with all the brands. There's a little bit of a return. To, we're just going to do what we do. We're not going to try to yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. do pieces and parts of other things. We're just going to focus on this. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also, I think that's really exciting, even though maybe that sounds like a more boring answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, I, that's something that I would advocate for. It's like, everybody should just do the things that make you feel good. You know what I mean? You don't have to have, the Arcteryx with this and that. You don't have to be wearing all Gore-Tex to, you know what I mean? Just like have a rain jacket and you can have a rain jacket and that's cool. But then you, it doesn't all have to be one or it's not all or nothing. It's back to the thing with your grandpa. It's just like, just kind of do your thing a, a little bit of here, a little bit there. And you can just be your own individual person. It doesn't have to be so I, you're pigeonholing yourself into one thing because that's what you've decided you are. Yeah, I think that especially coming out the other end of COVID, there was a lot of people trying to find what their brand was. Yeah, totally. And I think now that we just need to accept it. Like, you don't, your individual brand yeah. is you, you weren't defining yourself, you were defining it by other people's visions. Yeah. And I think that maybe that's like that softer lens that we're, that yeah. we're hoping okay. for and starting to you, see. So what are, you, are you getting at like maybe people have done all of that and everybody is kind of settling into themselves at this point? Yeah. Yeah. And that's almost what I mean too with like there's a confusion the on how to, how to digest this stuff anymore because I don't know how – I'm feeling a little like lost in it to a certain mm-hmm, degree. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that that's also okay. It I think will, it's good. It will sort itself out. Yeah, absolutely. And we can all just chill and – you know, still buy all the cool stuff we want to buy that yeah. fits into our stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like I've still, I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. The coolest part about what we do on, or what I see on discord is watching how many different people who dress very different than each other all get along in a space and all appreciate things about mm-hmm, each other and mm-hmm. still get inspired by each other. Even if it's like, I'm not going to wear that full La Mer kit, but God, I love that jacket. And I can yeah, work that into dope. what I do. Yep. Like getting inspired by each other. I actually think maybe that's what, I mean, it's, you know, we've pushed communities it's always been like one of our top mm-hmm, pillars mm-hmm. of what we do. And I think that like it has been lately the most inspired I've been with clothes is not from brands directly, but like how from people are actually community? wearing. Oh, okay. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, uh, uh, yeah. Drawing inspiration from your peers and less from strangers on the internet that you don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think that, that you're probably getting into a whole, you know, people getting a little exhausted with influencer marketing and stuff yeah, like that because yeah. it's become just as prevalent as regular marketing. Yeah. And, as much as it's fun to, t- I think that as much as it's fun to like rip the, you know, veil off of things where it's not just, you know, some avant garde Prada ad and it's like a guy wearing a Prada j- jacket and you're like, oh, that's, I get that now. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. that that's cool. But I think that that also is starting to feel just as cold as the super avant garde stuff. I just want, I want there to be, I just want a warm, fuzzy VHS style lens over everything. Right? You know what I mean? Where agree. it's like, I want things a little more lifestyle driven than, than influencer marketing. And I want them a lot softer than the like early 2000s. Let's ad. revisit that 
TV situation. Yeah, I really want this. I love I'm I'm interested in a very softer lens for 2024 for myself and for clothes in general. So we'll see what happens. But I definitely think fashion needs to have a little bit, it needs to take itself a little less seriously, but also not be like a joke like TikTok. You know what I mean? We will see. I don't control yeah. any of this. I just respond to it. That is my job you as know, a retailer, I, not. But you know, I would love if everybody got off the fucking internet for this year. But even like the the stuff that we've started like doing is uh, lately is like that we're working on as uh, you know right now is there is this like we have put like lightheartedness and warmth and softness and stuff into like everything that we've been working on so far for mm-hmm. like collaborations mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff for mm-hmm. for 2024 as we want it to be. You know, simple, easy to wear, flowy, comfortable, warm, fuzzy shit. Think of the the EG jacket we did last fall with, you know what I mean? Still still fresh in our brains, but like that nail on the head is it was a jacket we wanted everybody to feel comfortable to just reach for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We do it internally here. I see our communities wearing it all the fucking time still. It hasn't. I just think it's become a thing that people are happy to wear regularly and it doesn't have to have some crazy fucking shape. It's just like a good jacket that looks good and everybody feels good in it. Even Michan's brother who doesn't, I don't think he listens to the pod. He doesn't know anything about this whole world, but he loved the shop and thought it was really cool. And Colin's jacket was on the thing. He goes, man, that's a, that's a pretty dope ass jacket. I could wear that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, that's, I guess what the theme that we've been trying to like drive home in like more esoterically it, yeah. in what we do is like, it's for everybody. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? We're mm-hmm, not, I mean, mm-hmm. look, I understand that like maybe not every single person participates, but I don't want it to feel alienating at all. Like I no. really want to shed any sort of that kind of thing yep. that we can. Yep. You know what I mean? No, I just, completely it's not agree. important to me. I, I completely it's a agree. Waste of time. Well, on that note. <laughs> well, on that yeah. note, Brondo, we got some work to do, big pal. We, uh, yep. at the time of this coming out tomorrow, pop on over to sale because it's pop- yeah if you've been playing Check out the chicken sale page. with stuff this is this is go time yeah, yeah so if you're if you're you know yeah we got new stuff your moving in we got we got yeah. we got stuff going further we got and there's still a lot of good stuff to the getting's good <laughs> yeah oh you know what actually before we wrap up to answer the question from long long ago this feels like this ran three hours ago a brand that i am hype as fuck we looked at uh the beams beams japan we've been calling it beams home but it's beams japan the yeah. home goods from beams Bro, it's just all, it just gets better. I'm so fucking stoked. Yeah, everything we, if you like what we've been doing for the past couple of years, it's like, for some reason, the real shiners are shining. It's just we, hitting now, And yeah. like, you know, we're, we'll start teasing this now because we, you know, we like to tease things mm-hmm, for six mm-hmm, months in mm-hmm, advance, mm-hmm. but we've got like really good collabs pretty much fully locked in at this point. Yeah. We've got really cool concepts that yeah. we feel really proud of. We've got a new sort of like merch program that we're working yeah. through right now so there's still gonna be more regular small drops of cool merch yep. and stuff that's like more fun and just easy and and cool and, and we have big news next week oh yeah and then we got big news well next week. you yeah. know technically tomorrow we have big news tomorrow that i'll Depending be teasing toward communities and yeah. shit but we got some stuff in the works so if you are if you're still listening and you listen to our podcast and you're involved with us we love you and yeah and hey if you listen to this or you are on the if if there's any way you're connecting with this and you're not like following us on things like youtube or instagram or whatever please go follow all those things we're making some big changes that we're working on right now in in the first quarter of our business and we're really excited to like we're gonna make some big fun changes we're we're Mm -hmm. really gonna buckle down and work hard on like making it really feel like something that's different than what you're used to seeing around the internet um, yep. for fashion. Um, yeah. we're, we're really focused on it. We're really trying to like make big changes that maybe won't, they won't feel any different, but they're going to, what we're, what we're doing here, what we're doing on discord, what we've been doing inside of YouTube, we're just trying to take that more like soft, easy, comfortable approach, the approachable aspect and putting of it us. into everything that we yeah. do. So, so if you're not, if you don't follow us there, please go, you know, subscribe to all those things and get ready. Yep. Cause uh, you know, changes are coming. So, Yep. All right. Well, let's go make the changes happen. Yeah, thanks a ton. Yeah, all right.